<laughs> with all that's going on in the news, with, with fiscal cliffs, election results, climate change, health care concerns, and the housing crisis, you would think it would be easy to choose. The fourth speaker is called, it's my turn. I walk up to the desk and what do I get? How will the British succession be affected if Kate Middleton has twins? <laughs> Who will have a bigger impact on U.S.-South Korea relations, Kim Kardashian or Lady Gaga? <laughs> to what extent, if any, will Michelle Obama's dress selection at the inauguration affect the ability of her husband to influence the outcome of the 2016 presidential election? Should Hillary Clinton not decide not to run as an independent candidate? <laughs> With the possible support of the Republican Party and the potential collapse of the Saudi Arabian leadership under King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz al Saud. <laughs> so to my first point. <laughs> According to a good housekeeping article dated December 12, 2004, Kim Kardashian does have great legs and a penchant for Asian food. <laughs> And now a man who does it much better than I do, doing his original oratory, Mr. Gabriel Frost. Elephants cannot jump. The full name of the city of Los Angeles is El Pueblo de Nuestra Señora de los Ángeles de Puerto Cola. Not over an eye tall, a tin. There are 336 dimples on the regulation golf ball. And before we forget, the universe has no edge. Now, these facts are interesting, but are they useful? Or I guess the real question is, are they less useful than the traditional, what we need to learn this, part of the high A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Hydrogen weighs 1.00973 AM. The 100 years more or less than 160. Hamlet was written by a man named William. The song My Hums was written by a man named Will I Am. <laughs> what you gonna do with all that junk? All that junk inside your drum? <laughs> <laughs> it's a serious question. <laughs> because we have way too much junk in our knowledge trucks. And it's weighing us down at a time when we need to be strong. It's a jungle out there. We've got public debt crises and private debt crises, rising local competition, sky high unemployment, an economic system that's generally coming down around our ears, and had insult to injury. We are now running out of tweets. <laughs> so, what is worth knowing? And more importantly, who gets to decide? Because we're going to need to get jobs. We want to learn skills in a tough economy. But at the same time, these skills don't need to come from these guys. They're the kind of information that makes life interesting and learning fun. So today, let's understand that ignorance is useless. And there's no such thing as useless information. First, because even information that doesn't benefit us directly still has value. And second, because quote unquote useless information can help us out in our daily lives. Finally, we'll see how we can solve a crisis of closed mindedness that threatens all of us from preschool on. Now, we certainly aren't at a loss for information these days. Google and Siri can just as easily tell us the name, address, age, and phone number of every single one of Taylor Swift's legion of ex-boyfriends as they can about the biology. But unfortunately, far too often, our response to all this information is just to tune out all. And this ignores the examples of our forefathers. Galileo, Da Vinci, Descartes, Franklin, Jefferson, and Einstein all did what they did because they were interested in, well, everything. And while not everyone can overturn more than one field in a lifetime, we used to at least think that everyone should have these skills to try. These days, though, 46 states don't require the teaching of cursive in public schools. State University of New York institutions slash programs for the classics of humanities. And in July of 2012, education writer Andrew Hacker told the New York Times that algebra was too hard to be taught to most students. So let's get this straight. Math is too hard, and the 
much to solve. And science is too controversial. Obviously, the solution to all our educational problems is to just teach kids what they already know. <laughs> They'll do great in school. And then, fail at life. As Frank Donahue put it in his book, The Last Professors, today we see college only as investment, students as consumers, and information as a means to an end. But while we may need skills to avoid poverty, we acquire them at the expense of everything else. We are only impoverishing ourselves. But in our perpetually busy lives, just 6.7 hours a night, it seems like going after information that doesn't benefit us is kind of a waste of time. But at the same time, just because that information doesn't translate into dollars and cents, doesn't mean it can't make our lives. Plato and Marx were impractical philosophers, to say the least. We will never have a philosopher king, and communism will never work on a planet populated by humans. But at the same time, reading their writings gives us insight into the problems that mankind will face if it's not run correctly. No one wants to end up like the bad. Spoiler alert, he dies. <laughs> but we can see his motivations in every whether they're sovereign rulers or just our miserable bosses. And it's not just the men. Businessmen and lawyers need to know about science, too. Our cars are powered by internal combustion engines. The future of international politics hinges on who can find a new way to power our favorite kids most. And if that's not enough, let's take a moment to step back and appreciate the fact that scientists have now found a planet known as 55 Ken Free. It's about four times the size of the planet and made entirely out of diamonds. Kim Kardashian's already called names. <laughs> so why do we think that this information is useless? Because just because it doesn't make our lives richer doesn't mean it can't help us understand a weird and wild and wonderful world in a deeper and more meaningful way. Socrates once said, the price that good men pay for ignorance is to be ruled by yeah, and Socrates was so famous for being broke that 2,500 years later, he still owes his neighbor three chocolate chicken. Poultry aside, those who take some time out to prove Socrates and other philosophers' works might actually have found the secrets to success, not fail. They just shot. When the Wall Street Journal did research into business education in April of 2012, they found business schools racing to teach their students medicines and other humanities resources. The reason for this was simple. On Wall Street, just like everywhere else. It pays not to think like the average Joe, yeah. which is actually only the 22nd most common name in the United States these days. Students who had taken liberal arts classes were trained to see the world from a variety of perspectives, not just one. And because of that, they saw business opportunities that their more narrowly educated colleagues missed. And they were more successful. Meanwhile, in the sciences, According to the Harvard Business Review, interdisciplinary knowledge is key when it comes to solving the most intractable problems. Scientists don't solve problems by thinking about them in the same way. They solve them by thinking about them in ways. Today, most computer programs are designed in a language called C++, which has its roots in a computer punch card programming system that went out of fashion back in 1975. But that system would have been impossible if it hadn't been for a young engineering student named Herman Hoffman, who in 1890 paid attention in his history class. That day, he learned about the antiquated jock garden, which used cardboard punch outs to control the design of the factory. He repurposed that system, and in doing so, created an entirely new world of technology. 100 years of new achievements because he wasn't afraid to step outside the bounds of a single set curriculum. 100 years of technological achievements. So you could get into angry birds. Steve Jobs wasn't just a computer program. He used the design skills he learned in, why do we need to learn this? Calligraphy class. To help him create products that made Apple one of the largest and most powerful corporations on Earth. So whether you're an Apple fanboy, an Android devotee, or you still send your text messages to the account, it's obvious that useless knowledge is not.
nothing to see inside. But if all this is true, why did Forbes magazine say that liberal arts majors were destined to be waiters, waitresses, and food service providers? It's not because our education system doesn't need much to be done. According to the Labor Department, 56% of recent college graduates are either unemployed or unemployed. <coughs> graduates like Bill Gates, who has a degree in history and a hundred unanswered questions. Or like Andy Hume, who took the ever practical rather than majoring in business. And at 30, he still sells retail cosmetics because he could never find a job. short years, you and I, and every single one of us in this room will have the opportunity for employers to tell us that we have wasted our time. That the information we think it makes the world more whimsical and wonderful, more verdant and prosperous is useless. But it doesn't have to be this way. Society does not need to resign itself to an ever narrowing field of knowledge. We can broaden it by getting rid of an academic system that allows for such ridiculous prejudices to exist in the first place. So let's teach classes about the world. And not only include the reasons why they got started, but the chemical reactions that make the cats go Let's teach business classes, but include the morality of one's actions. Let's teach democracy and all the fighting and fighting and writing that make you want to actually work in tanks. And let's do it in a way that makes sure that no students, educators, or employers can ever forget that all of them, all of them, Frederick Douglass once said, to educate a man is to make him unfit to be slave. Today, millions are trapped in poverty because they have no skin. And millions more are trapped in place. Because they only have one set. But education begins at birth. It has no real graduation. You never know what small bit of knowledge can take you to the ends of the universe. 